The flip side is in the 80s, where unemployment fell to a phenomenally low 2.7% because McDonald's and others began offering twice the minimum wage, trying to attract workers. But back to Chile. In Chile, high unemployment was part of a deliberate policy. It was encouraged to depress wages. So during the crisis of 75, the unemployment rate, like I said, was about 18.7%. It went, it almost hit 54% with this free market, uh, uh, you know, uh, crap with the cutting of the government services and the privatization of everything and the cutting of the spending and the no more uh, social uh, safety nets and homelessness what was rampant. Uh, but Unemployment was averaging about 15.7% during their miracle, during what they called the, the miracle, 15.7%. So wages kept falling. Companies became more profitable. Uh, people were working longer hours for a whole lot less. And their productivity was reduced. And the only way they got away with it was because they had a strong-arm dictator there. They had uh, Pinochet who, who had people exiled and removed and executed and tortured and assassinated and disappeared and and i'm not going that far i'm not saying that that was that, that that's you know because you don't need to have that happen here you don't need to have it happen here we've already had a lost decade here and people were so propagandized that the same people that refused to tell me that they're republican anymore now they're tea party people would scream at me that I was crazy, that I was making this up, that it, that my facts weren't facts, but their, their, their ideas about how they felt about George Bush. They felt he, he loved America. They felt he was one of them. He, they felt that just because he couldn't make a sentence, that uh, that was fine because he was more like them. The stupider the president, the more they liked the president and related to the president. And he got away with it. He got away with it. So now in Chile, where they where they they look at this place like the worst case scenario for free market, uh, you know, experiments. Twenty percent of the population ended up owning about sixty percent of the wealth. Here, twenty percent of the population owns about eighty five percent of the wealth. But they're not done. The final coup de gras, the final tranche of money, is the social security money that's what they're after that's what this is about to this day i bet you sharon angle brings it up tonight i bet she talks about you know i never said privatized social security but in chile it's privatized and it works just fine it devastated chile they're still not completely recovered from milton friedman and the chicago school of economics so i just wanted you to know what you're hiring them to do to you and everything that was done there is exactly what they're saying out loud now. I mean, there was a time when you didn't say these things out loud. Now they're so stupid, the people that they chose are saying it out loud. So there's no guessing what their agenda is. Their agenda is obvious. Their agenda is to cut government spending, meaning no social services for you. And I'm talking about no police, no firefighting. You call 911, no one's going to answer. No more public schools, busting up unions, labor Minimum wage will go away. Never mind unions will go away. Privatized business uh, and everything else that you can imagine. So that the wealth that we have, the little bit that we have is transferred, just the little 15% that we're left, is transferred so that they have all of it. And they will invite foreign investors to come in here and interest rates will rise and people will come in here and they'll start plowing their money in and we'll end up with a country that we don't even recognize. English as a, uh, Spanish as a second language. Are you kidding me? You're going to have to learn Chinese and Russian <gasps> and French. Uh, Chris in LA. Hey, Randy, how are you doing? You're uh, killing it today. You're doing a great job. Thank you. Um, I had a thought this morning as I was whistling in the shower, and I thought you might find it interesting. Um, I was whistling the theme song to Family Ties, and here's a show during the entire 80s, during the entire Reagan era where we have hippie, you know, liberal or progressive parents with a Alex P. Keaton, you know, Republican son. But the interesting thing is, even when the show was number two for many years, uh, according to my research, uh, the show, there was still like an empathy and an, and an open discussion. And now we're reaching a point where 
you know, the, the newspaper can't figure out if, if she won the debate or not. I mean, there's no question. There's no, there's no honesty. There's no empathy. There's, there's nothing left. And uh, it just doesn't make sense, you know. I mean, that, that was my thing. I, I like to go back to, the, to the Alex P. Keaton. And then when I looked it up on Wikipedia, it turns out that in the show, Alex Keaton was born in Africa, uh, to his parents when they were in the Peace Corps. So I thought that was interesting. <laughs> <laughs> he has no papers. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, look, I remember that show. I, I, I loved that show, actually. Um, I was, cr- I'm still crazy about, um, oh, who played uh, uh, Keaton? Michael Keaton. Uh, oh, wow. Uh, Michael J. Fox. Yeah, I'm looking at here. Uh, Michael yeah, J- Michael J. Fox. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm still crazy about Michael J. Fox. I was so in love with that guy, but I always imagined as a, as a you know young girl watching that show that I could change him. <laughs> 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 that, yeah, that if, that if I could, you know, if I could just have five minutes with uh, with uh, Michael J. Fox, that he would never, ever, ever play Michael Keaton, ag- that he would never play uh, Keaton again. Well, you know, the interesting thing about the show is that it, you watching the show, you get the feeling that you could change them, you know, and, and my family members, I can't change their mind anymore. They hate me now because of what I believe, and I, I'm starting to, you know, feel a certain way about them. And even within a family, it's it's difficult to reconcile how crazy things have gotten in America. You know, I mean, I'm looking through the the episode list of you know, there's there's an episode about where they protest nuclear arms and and Alex is pro nuclear weapons, but <laughs> then his sister questions his reasoning, and then they come to some sort of compromise where you know, and and that's great. I mean, that that sort of discourse in America on a prime time number one show. You know, I and mean, just imagine what Family Ties would be now in 2010 with uh, with The Witch and whatnot. Look, she's the least of our worries. That woman is not going to win Delaware. There's no question about it. But there are Senate races out there that are critical. And uh, the idea that there are people who are, I don't know, not contemplating voting, they're not going to recognize this country. They're really not. They're not going to recognize it. It's really a serious time. I mean, the idea that, you know, we lived through the Reagan. Reagan actually got to the point where he raised taxes. 1982 was one of the largest tax increases in the history of the United States of America. So, obviously, you had a guy who, you know, understood that no matter what his party said, no matter what, you know, how he got elected, the country was tanking. And he had to raise taxes. And he did, but he did it in weird places, like unemployment insurance was taxed. And he took away your credit card deduction. You used to be able to deduct your interest. I mean, th- this crop is going to go after every single thing, from policing to school teachers to firefighters. You've already seen it. And this country is going to sit there, and it- it's going to say, as it goes down the tubes... Well, he didn't pay his seventy-five dollars, so let his freaking house burn down. Not realizing once the fire is over, you got a burnt house in your neighborhood. Yeah, and your house isn't worth that much now. Yeah. I'm telling you, you this uh, you need to look on my uh, website, randyroads.com, and go on the homework section and read this thing called Chili the Laboratory Test. It's not short because destroying an economy over sixteen years is not a short subject. So, But we've been at destroying our economy for about nine now, so we're about seven years away from looking like Chile. The next thing is the privatized pensions and the privatizing of Social Security, which Newt Gingrich is uh, you know, all for. Uh, he knows all about this uh, Chilean uh, uh, Milton Friedman, uh, Friedman uh, uh, Chicago Boys Economics. He knows all about this uh, laboratory that we set up in Chile. He knows what it looks like. He knows we experimented with free market, uh, you know, philosophies there, and he knows exactly what happened. He's just counting on being, you know, part of the top twenty. And everybody else can go live in the street. And that's basically what happened when they privatized the pensions. Uh, 96% of the enrolled workforce uh, since February 1995 is enrolled in a private pension. But 43% haven't contributed to their funds. And 60% don't give regularly. And here's the loophole. If you don't give regularly, you can't receive your full benefit. So only about a quarter of the workers contribute enough to get the minimum benefit, which is $1.25 a day. Only 20% of the population that's in these private pensions now will ever see anything.
from the private pensions. But the companies are raking in the dough and they're using it and they're real happy with it.